Hi everyone, my name is Shir. I teach the, um, the Mechina, which is the uh, novice, the, the beginner's level of Hebrew at Hebrew College. Let me begin with the slideshow already. One minute. So, welcome to the free online demo um, of the Hebrew College uh, Mechina. What we'll be doing today, the idea of today's demo um, again, if you have any questions, feel more than free to just unmute yourself and talk. Um, we have two main ideas. It will be around a half an hour-ish, maybe a little less, a little more. depends on you guys and how many questions you have. So we will begin with 15 min minutes of a demo, which means that I will kind of explain um, how um, our course works, Hebrew-wise, um, and kind of show you the tools that we use, the online tools, and then you will have a 15 minute of question and answers. So, and we have with us Shani, who will be Hi. helping us. Shani, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Shani. Um, I also work with Shear at JETS um, in the Hebrew College team that you'll be looking at today. Um, I'm also happy to help anybody while Shear's talking. If anyone has questions about anything, needs help with their microphones, cameras, links, anything, then I'm happy to help you out. Exactly. So if anybody has any questions, just let us know. Even say, um, she or Shani, we don't get what, um, how you're doing, whatever, and Shani will be here to help you. Does so, everyone know how to use the chat? Yeah, you can use, if you see on the um, bottom um, right side of your screen, you have three little dots that say more. If you press that, you have a chat. You can chat there any question that you might have, and then I or Shani will be able to answer those questions. So that is that. So um, again, I said that we'll be doing 15 minutes of the uh, lessons and 15 minutes of the um, of questions and answers. What I said before is that I don't have the option to mute you guys. So whoever didn't mute himself, just mute, and then we'll be able to begin. Okay. Oh, mute. So. So what are we going to do today? So there are three levels that we are currently teaching at Hebrew College. The Mechina, Hebrew 1A and Hebrew 1B. Um, Mechina is the beginners and then there's 1A which is novice and then 1B which is a bit more difficult than that. Today I'm going to be showing you a demo of the Mechina. So for some of you this might be difficult because you are on that level or some of you might be, this might be the perfect level for you. For some of you this might even be um, too easy. It really depends on what level you come from. When you come to, when you sign up for Hebrew College, we will evaluate in which level you need to be. But this is just so you know, today we'll, I will be showing you um, samples of the Mechina level, which is um, novice, low novice, really beginner's level. So that is the levels we're going to see. Um, regarding kind of the idea behind this course, um, we believe in the proficiency approach to teaching a language. The idea of that approach is that we do teach grammar, it's important to us, but even more important for us is that you see as much authentic Hebrew as possible. Um, that you hear authentic Hebrew, that you see songs in Hebrew, that you see videos, that you learn how to type in Hebrew, um, that you have those different options just surrounding the authentic Hebrew language. So that is the approach. And I'll show you kind of examples of what I mean by the proficiency approach now. So the first thing, for example, this I just took a couple of activities from our Hebrew course, from the Mechina course. And we talked, for example, about how to say, what do you like? How do you say, tell a person what I like? I like this, I like that. Um, so the way that you would say it in Hebrew, in the course, we would begin by learning the verb, learning just how to say it. So the way that you would say that, if you were a male, you would say, Ani Ohev. And if you are a female, you would say, Ani Ohevit. Um, and then if you want to say um, that you like, for example, books, you can say, Ani, eh, so I'm a female, so I would say, Ani Ohevit Sfari. Um, so that is, for example, just the way that you would say that you would like. Um, so that is that. Does anybody maybe want to try to, to sound that out, to, to say that he likes Ani Ohev or Ani Ohevit? Um, um, yeah. Ani ohave chocolate vetutim vesafarim. Yefe, yefe. So you like chocolate and strawberries and <laughs> yefe, yefe. Gamani, <laughs> me too, me too. Fantastic, exactly. So we would um, kind of go around, ask each other, what do you like? Um, learn 
new um, new nouns that we can say that we would like. That is what we would begin with. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask. So that was the verbs. And then, as I said, um, we would look, we can start correcting grammar from the beginning. Um, yes, yeah, so we do correct grammar, but part of the proficiency approach is that the most important thing for me is that you feel confident to say a sentence in Hebrew. So even if you make a, gr a grammatical mistake, I will correct you because it is a way of learning, but it is more important for me that you feel comfortable to, to speak, to fluently speak, and slowly, slowly, I, I, you, you will get better. Um, you might make mistakes in the beginning, slowly, slowly you'll get better, but yes, we do correct grammatical mistakes, of course. So in that example, you didn't say, I need have it at chocolate. Okay, so you don't, so we'll get to that in okay. the Mishnah. You don't need to say, and you have it et chocolat. You might need to say, and you have it et ha chocolat, but if you want to say, and you, you said it's okay. fine, and you have it chocolat is the correct way to say it. Okay, thank you. But, but I would have corrected you. If you would have said that wrong, then I would have said what, what is the correct way, but you said that correctly. So, um, like I said, we learned kind of the verb, and then we would want to hear maybe um, a song in Hebrew. So you can try to listen to the song. The song is the child that is saying what he likes. We'll listen to the first couple of sentences, uh, se um, um, seconds. See if you can understand what the child is talking about that he likes. <laughs> telling all the different things he'd like. We'll learn many of the nouns that he's talking about. So that was, you know, we have, um, the way that the program works is that you have, we have a 40 minute live lesson once a week and I give you assignments to do at home. So here, here we have a couple of examples of the assignments that you do at home. We sent them to you by mail. So if you want, you can, while I'm even showing you the assignments, you can kind of log into your, um, into your Gmail account and kind of see the games. I will also send them now in the chat. If you want, you can also, during your free time at home, wait a minute, you hear it logged into the link. If you want, also at home, you are welcome to, to try to, to kind of play around with these games. So the first game that we have here is a Quizlet game. I, well, I'll kind of show you what this game works, how, how this game works, but I am sending this Wait a minute, I sent this now in the chat box. Whoever wants can kind of try logging in and playing. So for example, this is an activity that I can give you to, during class or at home. And this is an example of how the internet and technology can really enhance language learning and language profi proficiency. So this is just a game. The idea is a matching game. We heard now a song, we learned many different verbs and nouns, so you will have to match it. You can again play this at home and see if you can beat my score. So for example, we have the verb ohev. So ohev is to like. We have chocolate, chocolate. We would kind of match around. We have tutin, strawberries, sfarim, books, and omanut, art. That is the game. You kind of play around and match the game. So that's one example of um, how this would work. Another thing that I can give you to do at home is this very cool worksheet. Again, an example of language proficiency using the internet. So this is an app called Wiser. This is something that you would do at your free time at home. And I would check, and um, somebody here has asked, if we check grammar from the beginning, then yes, I will check this and I will give you obviously your answers. Even if we don't meet live, I have my ways of checking it at home. So in the beginning, you have the verb, you have um, to match, for example, um, a pronoun and the, the, the pronoun to the verb. That is one example of an activity. You have fill in the blanks. You have pictures you need to write if you like the, what you see in the pictures. Um, you have recordings that you hear me. Recordings are an amazing feature here. You can record yourself and I can, um, even if we only meet 40 minutes a week, but at home you're recording the way that you are speaking and I can correct 
the way that you're pronouncing things. I'll hear your recording and I'll send you great, great recording, or I'll tell you it's great, but you need to pronounce it in a different way. I'll record myself pronouncing it. Um, so that is what this app works like. You, you record, you write. It's a really, really great way to learn. The next thing is if you have a video and it's a bit of a high level, I mean, what do we do? For example, the song, he's saying many, many, many different nouns. How do you know what to do? So this is a great, a great tool that we use where we kind of show you the video and ask you questions. Now, if the technology looks a bit overwhelming down now, don't worry during the, um, the lessons, we go over things very slowly. If you have questions throughout the week, you send them to me and I'm there for any questions. So now we're showing you to you, know, you know, in like five minutes, but know that during when, when we begin. And so this, for example, this is an app where we hear the song and then it just stops and asks you questions throughout the song. So for example, And now it just paused and it asked, what, is the, what does the child like? What is the first thing that the boy likes? And you can answer, submit. And this is a way for you to see if you understood the song correctly. So that is another thing that we can use. And the last thing, um, this I'll go over very fast. This is more like a, another thing that we believe in is the collaborative activities where you kind of talk to each other throughout the week. You can log into this at home and see. But here I wrote a kind of uh, a sport that I like. I like yoga. Um, you would, if you were doing this at home, then I would let you rank whatever sports you like, um, different ways of using that verb. So that's just an example of, of the main tools that we use. Again, you can see the idea is to play games, to make it a bit more fun. The idea is to let you record yourself so you can practice speaking, to hear recordings so you can hear the language, um, to see songs, which makes the language a bit more authentic. That is pretty much the idea of the, of these games. So. Now we have questions, uh, question time, whichever question you might have. So whoever has a question can either send it in the chat or um, just uh, fire away and ask whichever question. Just please unmute yourself if you have the question and feel free to ask. If you also want, you can go over into go into the links that we sent you by mail, kind of go into those and see if you have any questions about those maybe. I had a question, Shir, about uh, vowels. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so do we do, do you start straight away with no vowels? Okay, great question. So we begin with vowels. Here I didn't write with vowels just because I typed it on my computer and it takes more time, but we begin with vowels, yes. And it slowly, slowly, we take the vowels away because again, like we said, we want to show you authentic material. Um, We'll learn, whoever doesn't know, the vowels in Hebrew, they are not letters, they, are, they appear above or under the word, so they technically, you can write in modern Hebrew, you write without the vowels. What we do in order to compensate for the fact that at a certain point we take out the vowels is put a lot of recordings in. So even if you don't see the vowel itself and you don't know how to pronounce the word, we'll put in a recording and then you can see it. And if there's a word that you're still not sure about how to pronounce, you can even, um, ask, um, send, there are students that sent me like a list of words that they don't know how to pronounce and I, I, I um, recorded myself pronouncing those words. So it's a great question. We begin with vowels, slowly, slowly, we, we take them away. Um, so some, Sherry is asking, is the class time offered in the evening for those of us who work full time? So uh, another good question. What we will do is um, we will begin by trying to find a time that works for as many students as possible. Um, I'm in Israel. I, I'm actually, I'm from Israel. Maybe I should have began by introducing myself. My name is, uh, like I said, here, and I live in Jerusalem. I'm a Hebrew teacher um, from Israel. So because I am from Jerusalem, then we do need to make a, there's a seven hour time difference. Um, so because of that, it, 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 might, it is sometimes harder to make it your time on evenings. So we try to make it either um, we see either we find a time in the mornings that works for everyone, either we try, or we try to find that is as late as possible throughout the week, or we find the time that is on Sundays that works. Um, we try to work that out. Another question that Arnie has, do you give any assignments between classes that have students speaking to each other, not just interacting and writing? Yes, yes, of course. So we, that's a great question. Um, we, ha we have, I didn't show them to you now, but in the collaborative activities, we do have an option also, a recording option, where you ask, 
question to one of your peers and he answers you. So that is definitely a great question. I, I just thought that I really didn't introduce myself, uh, what, what I do, so maybe this is a good time. So I teach, so my name is Shira and I work at a company um, called Jets and we work, we, collab we have this incredible collaboration with Hebrew College where we are creating this material. So um, I teach Hebrew online, that is what I do, I create online material for teaching Hebrew, um, many different levels, novice, high, um, I also teach at uh, high schools that are abroad here, so that is my, uh, my background. Um, great, so any other questions, maybe? Anyone else? Yes, okay, uh, I have a question. Yes, we have time for both of you, so whoever wants to be. Um, I was just wondering, like, what's the structure of the week? How, like, how many minutes do we meet together? Um, like FaceTime and then like how much homework do we get on our own? So I just want to know like the structure. Great question. So you, we meet once a week for 40 minutes. That is the live lesson. Um, and regarding homework, it depends. There are people that it takes them longer and there are people that it takes them less time, obviously. It's usually two to three hours. I think that would be the best, sometimes more, sometimes less. And it really depends on you also on what we, what I do is many times I also give you an option. You have an option of putting more time into it and writing like a longer essay or a longer sentence. And if you're a, a beginner, then you have the option to write a shorter sentence, but it's 40 minutes of a live session and an around two or three hours of the, um, of working on your own. So that is that we'll just get, we'll get to the online question. The, somebody wrote a question in the chat. I'll get to that in a second. But before that, somebody else here had a question. Yes, that, that was me, uh, Michael. So uh, um, hi, Michael. I want to make hi, sure. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, I wind up in the right uh, level of class. I already responded with uh, uh, Shani, Shani about um, the placement tests, and um, you know, in uh, um, in a situation where the placement test is somewhat ambiguous, you know, for example, um, I scored a sixty-four on the online machina test, um, you know, it's a, uh, if it turns out kind of ambiguous, is there overlap uh, among the levels, uh, between the successive levels, and also would it ever make sense from your point of view uh, for somebody to take two levels at the same time? As you can tell, I'm sort of in a hurry. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would take two, two uh, levels at the same time. I think that I actually don't know if that is even possible. I think that I that is definitely something that I can check or that is also something that you can just check with Hebrew College. I wouldn't recommend it because the levels they're they're built on each other and I mean if you're learning stuff at one on you know one A which is the level above the Mechina but you don't have the Mechina then you're, you're missing the the base that you need for that. Um, what I can say is that if you begin the Mechina and we see that um, this is not your level and that you're at a much higher level, then, then maybe we can discuss and see, let's see what can be done. Maybe you can be put in a higher level or, or, or take the test again and see if you can get a, if you can do that. But, um, but I wouldn't do to, I don't think, I, I don't even know if it, need, if it can be done, right, but it's something right. that I need to check, and I, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't recommend it. But you can also start the next one immediately after you finish the first level. Yes, so. yes, exactly. So each level is around is one semester. So if you finish one level and mm -hmm. you're, you can automatically go to the next level, definitely. Um, so somebody here, there are two questions in the chat. So how do you assess students for placement and how do you assess students as they progress? Okay, so um, for placement, I do, I'm, it might change, but I do believe that there is an assessment test. Whoever will sign up for Hebrew College will be told exactly. Sometimes we do an assessment test, sometimes we, choose, we do it a bit differently. Usually there's an assessment test. So as far as progress grows, um, you are assessed throughout the course using, um, I, I check the assignments that you hand in. So for example, kind of the worksheets that I, that I showed you and that I sent you the links to. I can tell you to do that and then I can, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll grade you on, on how, how much you got on that. So that is one form of assessment. And there is a uh, final assessment at the end of the course. But um, I assess you in a way weekly because each week I can see how your progress is going and how you're doing on those assignments. So that is that. Um, did that answer the question, Arnie? If, if it didn't, then just type in the chat or let me know. 
And um, somebody else, who is this from, um, it says from iPhone, who asked this question? The next one. So uh, I just, I'm just worried because I work full time Monday to Friday. I'm in a mountain standard time. So if you like pick a morning time and I'm working, you know, are there two times that could be offered or is it just like you're offering it once and if I'm working and I can't come, then I dismiss it. How does, how does that work? So usually it really depends. I mean, what, what it, it depends on how much, how many people sign up and how many times we can find what we did last semester, for example, is that we did two times for one on Sunday and one on, on Mondays, I think. Um, and we just, and whoever couldn't make it just had to watch the recordings um, and kind of do it asynchronously, the entire thing at home. It's not recommended. The record, what coming to the live lessons are very, it is very beneficial. Um, even if you can make it to some of the live lessons. But like I said, we try, Sometimes we do two times a week, for example, in order to try to accommodate as many people as possible. Um, but if you can't come to the live lessons, then you can usually watch the recordings and um, and do it that way. Watch the recordings and do the assignments at home. So that's that's another option. Um, okay, great. Any any other questions? Or? Yeah, I have yeah. I have two. Um, mm -hmm. First, uh, do you use a textbook? Or is it all based on materials that you've developed and post? Great. So it's a great question. Everything is online. We don't use a textbook. Um, all of the material, including like, the instructions, the grammatical ideas, um, the assignments, everything is on what we call an LMS, which is a learning manage management system. It's kind of like a website. I can even show you. I'll show you what it looks like. One minute. Here. Um, this is our LMS. This is the website. This is what where all the assignments are. So for example, this is the first unit um, Here there's just like a list of assignments So if I will meet you like I said for this 40 for the 40 minutes and then I will tell you for example Do activities two three and four and then you need to log into here and all everything is here all the activities Everything is on this website and whoever will sign up for the course will get obviously access to this website um, we can also communicate through this website. You have a, an option to send me messages, to ask me questions, everything is here. So for example, the a kind of worksheet, you will have the worksheet on the website itself. You'll have the questions, an option to write the answers. Everything is on here. Um, did that answer the question? Absolutely. Second question was, I noticed that you put a lot of transliteration. Is that just for the demo or is that? Yes. Okay. You, you mean here, the where I wrote Sfarim? Yes. The food team and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, good. Good question. Yes, it's only for the demo. We will sometimes, I usually will put the English definition when we're learning a new word or, or a new verb, but we don't, or I'll put a picture. That's even better. Just the, the word of the picture. This is only because it is the demo. During the lesson, you will not see. This will not be on your screen. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Yes, so any other questions for anyone? Arnie, um, Arnie. I, I, I'm, I'm worried I'm giving you an echo. Um, I, I was wondering, do you make the goals um, clear and transparent? Uh, like, will uh, the students know what it is <laughs> that um, are the goals of each aspect of the unit um, and, and and what it is you're assessing that in in terms of um, the learning, are you using in using the novice and the novice high, low novice 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 high? Are you making those specific proficiency goals explicit, and then people know this is what we're working on is mastering these these elements or? So, so what goals are you, do you mean? Do you mean like proficiency the, goals the, or yeah. goals? Or? Well, the proficiency goals include all of the language goals. Yes. So I, I was wondering to what degree they're actually made explicit so students know what it is that they're, the goals that they're working on and, and, and what the, that the lessons are built in order to help you achieve mastery of those particular uh, language goals. 
So we don't we don't go. There is a, a, the proficiency approach does say, for example, know the slow what you are supposed to know at that level and a bit higher. Um, I usually don't I don't go over that like like I don't show them the exact charts, but we do talk about that about the fact that at this point you're not expected to understand um, a five minute video in Hebrew. At this point, what I expect you to understand is a couple of words and to maybe be able to be able, even be able to take those couple of words and turn them into a sentence. I expect you to understand um, phrases. I maybe at a certain point, I expect you to understand a full sentence. So in that sense, we do tell what the proficiency goals are. For example, before we here, we just listen to the song, but when we would do this during the lesson that I would, before we listen to the song, I say, I would say, I don't expect you to understand the full song, but I want you to try to see um, how many verbs can you understand in the song or how many fruits can you understand in the song? Because that is the level that the students are proficiency wise here. Um, so in that sense, we do before each activity, I do kind of say, yes, that is what I expect. Um, I expect you to be able to write um, a sentence using the words that we learned. I want uh, here, I expect you to, to look up new words um, and see if you can write a full sentence. Um, in that sense, we do, we do talk about the goals. Yes. Yeah. Great. Pedagogically, what do you think about Ivrit Vivrit's like full immersion? Um, what do you mean by by Ivrit? Ah, about Ivrit okay. So about so who asked that? What what is your name? Dana. Dana. Yes. So okay, Dana. Um, I think that Ivrit Vivrit full immersion is fantastic. I think it depends on the level that you are on and also um, if you're in a classroom or if you're online. So for example, in the Mechina, which is the, um, the Novus Low, we don't, we don't use um, full immersion, Ivrit Bivrit, because it takes a while. So sometimes people need to learn also the technology. It's, it's easy technology, but it is something that needs to be learned. So that is something that we don't do. I have to say that the, the higher you go on the levels, it will become more and more immersion wise. The first, the students that I teach on the higher levels, there we will do Ivrit Bivrit full immersion. Um, my approach is that it really depends on the level and it also depends if you have, um, if you are in a classroom, then maybe you would do full immersion. I think that here, sometimes you don't need that because you do, um, you have immersion when you, when you see the videos and the songs and that also gives you kind of an aspect of that. So that is, that's my general approach to this. Just to add to that, um, when you're only doing an hour a week of in-person teaching with a, a language, um, an immersion approach, it, you're, it's actually already definitionally, you don't have really an immersion environment. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. 40 minutes, I, exactly, yeah. 40 minutes, so you're trying Online, to maximize, yeah, you're trying to maximize the impact of the in-person time versus the work that's going to be done. Exactly, exactly. Right, I was asking more theoretically. It exactly. De it depends on the conditions and it depends, it depends on the conditions, it depends on the developmental stage of the student. Um, uh, it depends on what the goals of the content is. Um, sorry to preempt that this is my field so i agree with you completely again i do have students that i meet them maybe not once so i meet them three times a week for 40 minutes and they're at a high enough level also that, that i i do do that with them but here it's not um it, it would it's not it defeats our goals i think okay thank you great um any other questions anyone I have another question. What is the, what are the dates of the semester span? Who, who, I'm sorry, if you can just state your name, whoever speaking. Amy, this is Amy, Amy. sorry. Yes, hi Amy, no problem. Um, the course begins, February, the semester begins February 4th. I don't remember exactly when it's over. It's over sometime in May, I think. I don't remember the exact finish date, but that is, it, okay. February 4th is the first week of the semester. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. All that information, I think, is, um, is online. But yeah, here, I think somebody wrote in the chat. Um, how much is it? What do you mean price was? How much does the course cost? And is, is that the question? For, um, yeah? 
if that is the question, if the question is, um, um, course, actually, I don't know <laughs> how much the course costs. If you want, I'll write my mail to uh, my um, email and you can, um, first of all, you can look at, uh, through it in the Hebrew College website and you can, I'll write my mail in a second and then you can, I can also try to find the, send you that information, but I don't know exactly how much it costs. Um, you have to talk with the administration at Hebrew College and they'll be able to, to answer that question. I think. Um, great. Any other questions? Maybe. So let me just, I'll type in, I'm typing now my mail into the chat box. Um, I sent now my mail and you are more than welcome to send me any other question that you might have. I'll also type it here. So this is my mail under the question, shirtwersky at gmail.com. Um, if you do have any other question, please feel free to ask me, or you can also ask the administration at Hebrew College. They'll also, um, the Hebrew College website, you can get there all the details that you want, or ask Deborah. you also re received the mail from her. So you can definitely feel free to ask any one of us. Um, that's it. So if, if you don't have any other questions, then that was that. It was I'm very, it was very glad. I was very glad to meet you guys and um, I'd be very happy to see you. Can I ask one more question? Yes, of course. All right, last question. No problem. Um, so I did a lot of research and there are a ton of um, online Hebrew classes. So <clears throat> One of the reasons I picked this program was I liked one where I can, you know, have an online segment where I'm with other classmates, um, but also because the price was lower, to be honest. But tell me why, why I should choose your program over all the other programs. So I don't know, I, I don't even know what, I don't know what other programs are offering. I know, for example, Rosetta Stone and those kind of programs. Um, I think that our program, there are a couple of things that um, make it very special. The first thing is the, is the fact that we have, like you said, both, both FaceTime with the teacher and time to work on things at home. And the fact that me or there are other teachers for the, for the different levels, um, we are completely there for you throughout the week. So if, for example, there is something that there's a word that you can't find in the dictionary or there's something that you don't know how to pronounce or there's a sentence that you want to say and you don't know how, then we're there for you. And even if we meet once a week face to face and that's the time for questions, but you can send us questions throughout the week and we'll answer you. We, we answer pretty fast usually. So that is one thing that is very helpful. And I think that something that is really great is also just the fact that we really believe in the proficiency approach and using technology. Um, like I said, we use the technology to create games and to create videos and turn them into segments. Um, and we really try to have you see as much authentic Hebrew as possible. I very, really believe in the proficiency approach. I think it is, first of all, a, a more enjoyable way of learning a language. Um, and second of all, I, I find from my experience that it is more um, efficient, I think. Um, it, sometimes it takes a bit more, it's, it takes more time, but it gives you a stronger base for the language learning. So that is, that is definitely what I think, um, mainly those, um, those issues. Great. I'll just chime in also that the curriculum that we build also I think is very unique in not only that it's asynchronous and synchronous and all the points that Shear mentioned about proficiency method, et cetera, but also we are building this custom for this course. It's not for anything else. It's only specifically for the needs of you. And we will build it based on your feedback, based on your likes and dislikes. We obviously can't base it around each individual, but we do the best we can. And we really try to work from the level that you're at. And therefore, the curriculum is really tailor-made for your needs, more than I, I think you can find anywhere else. I agree with that completely. It's not that you have... Um, if I see that there's something that you don't like, that it doesn't work for you, then we might skip it. And if, if there's something that you're saying, this is really important for us to work on, then we will do that completely. I mean, this, is, this is like a classroom in that sense. It's not um, Rosetta Stone where there's like a list of things that you need to do. It's a classroom and it's dynamic and we see what your needs are. 
um, you see kind of where we're going and we kind of find a way to to make the maximum out of that. So that definitely, Shani, I completely agree with that. Thank you. Um, great, great. So any, any other questions? Okay, top. So um, as we say in Hebrew, um, it was nice to meet you. And um, I'd be very happy to see you all in, um, in one of our future classes. And um, let me know if you have any questions or anything. And obviously for signing up, you can go to the Hebrew College website or um, send Deborah, who sent you this mail, just answer her and send her back um, what other questions you might have. So thank you very much, you guys. And um, bye. bye. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.